What's going on everybody, I'm JBM, JBM Design Company, and today I'll be showing you how I reclaim some screens and get set up for the next job. Stay tuned. Alright, so the first thing you want to do is here are the screens that we will be reclaiming, except for this one. But as far as the rest of them, first thing you got to do is make sure you clean off all the ink. Then you got to remove the tape, which I haven't done. Since I'm not reclaiming this screen, I got an extra screen here, which is a 160 mesh, which is what I need for a job coming up. Alright, so I'm going to get the tape off and I'm going to show you how to get all the emotion off. Here's the thing about ink. You always gonna get it on your hand. No big deal. Just give it a quick spray. Plastisol remover. And it's gone. I'm gonna get this 160 mesh first. Put it in here. Oh, and this rack came from the dollar store. Use your resources, save some money. I got a dedicated sponge that I like to use for my emulsion. And I just like to get both sides wet. All right, all I'm using is a little pump sprayer to do that. So I like to put the uh, emulsion stripper on there and just rub it so I can agitate it enough so I can see the emulsion starting to loosen up and start to smear on the screen if you can see it. And then I just do that until on both sides until the emulsion starts to get loose and then I just let it sit for a few more seconds before I hit it with pressure washer. Now the screen's good to go. If you have any ghosting on your screens, it's okay because once you coat it with the uh, emulsion for your next print, the ghosting will not affect any of your prints. But there are chemicals that you can use to remove the ghosting images on the screens. All right, so what questions can I answer that I think I might be asked, I'm not sure. I got all four of my screens in here. There's a fan inside of there, drying off my screens. Then I gotta come back and coat them. Like I was saying, since I got the pressure washer off, 
I use this emulsion stripper to get the emulsion off. I use this, I just poured it in this bottle to get my ink off, which is this stuff right here. It's green, S green ink degrader. Uh, what other questions can I answer? How do I filter my water? Through these two buckets. One's right there in the back, one's right here, and I put in my own PVC piping to drain it out. How do I filter the water? I use these. I put those inside of the bucket. I kind of work my PVC pipe to go inside of the filter because I've noticed when I first did it that the filter clogs up with all the stuff, all that gunk. It get it gets clogged up in the filter. So you got to make sure the water can still pass through while it still blocks all the stuff. Um, I can't think of any other questions. So I got a bunch, bunch of boxes. Mail time. Let's see what we got. First, I already opened this. This is a USB-C to USB-C so that my camera or computer doesn't die the next time I go live. So I got that worked out. I got these. Um... I've never used these before, and I'm thinking that this one, which is a 16 inch, is going to be too big, so I'm going to have to get a smaller one. What else I got? Inside this box. Huh. Hats. And hats. And one hat by itself. Cool. So this is uh, the Yupong adjustable strap in the back, the, uh, the twill cap. All right, we'll just throw that to the side. Then, what else we got? What is this? The camera's so bright. I'm gonna darken it. I can't. Got these from Amazon, Spartan Industrial. What are these? Oh, these are clear packaging. Man, the camera is super bright. Is that better? That looks better. Alright, so these are just packaging to put shirts in. 12 by 18. Actually, I got these for hoodies. I got a smaller size for shirts. Also bought these 10 by 13 so I can ship off shirts. Also got that off Amazon because the ones that I have are very large. And I didn't feel like sending my customer stuff with a bunch of uh, dead space. What are these? Uh, these are file folders. So I can start organizing all of my paperwork and everything for 2021. Organize the office upstairs because right now it's a hot mess. And these, what do we have here? These are a bunch of shirts for my next order. Which it should be like 40 shirts, but the customer wants it's like a bunch of different colors. All right, so if the screen keeps getting light and then dark, it's because I got the garage door open and the sun is just dipping behind the clouds. All right, so there's my order form. I gotta go back. Later on, verify I got the right stuff. And that was mail time. And as you can see, a bunch of boxes just crowding up the place. All right, so I'm down here on the ground because this is where I like to coat my screens. Now you can either do this on the ground or you can do it on like a tabletop. But for me, I like to be on the ground. So for this, I'm using some Ulano Orange to coat my screens. And what I like to do is just take it 
give it a quick little swirl, you know, disturb the little molecules or whatever's inside of this bucket. And then I get me a little plastic sheet to put my screens on top of so I can coat it. Then I get my scoop coater. Scoop holder, the scoop coater has two sides. It has a thin side, it has a thicker side. For these four screens, I'm gonna use the thin side. So I put that down on my little plastic sheet so I don't mess anything up. Pop the lid off of this emulsion. I don't remember if I just said it, but on camera, it probably looks a lot brighter than it actually is in the garage. But when you're coating screens, you should somewhat have a low light. Obviously, because this is light sensitive. So you take this and you turn it this way so you can see it. Make sure I got everything on the screen. And you just go straight across just like that. Then I'm gonna get one of these and just scoop the rest of it out. Makes for an easy cleanup so it's not dripping down the side of the bucket. All right, I'm just gonna set this to the side for now. Because what I don't use on here, I'm gonna put it back. So I have my four screens in here that I just washed out. I'm gonna do it one screen at a time. All right. So I'm gonna do one coat on each side. Make sure I have the right side. So I need to spin this around. And what you want to do is you want to take your scoop coater, fit it inside the screen, put it all the way to the bottom, and you want to tilt it. Tilt it so the emulsion, oh, let me get the light back on. All right, there we go. So I got to work faster because the light's on a Timer. All right, scoop it so the, the emulsion evenly goes to the screen. Tilt it. Come straight up. If you happen to get hung up when you do it, just do it one more time. When you come to the top, you have to slightly um, angle your uh, scoop coater back so that the emulsion falls back into the scoop coater. Turn it over, get the other side. That's one screen.
All right, so now that I got all of my uh, screens in here, I can cover it back up. And my drying rack has a fan built into it. So you can probably get a fan running. I'm gonna leave that in there. Give the uh, screens time to dry. And then tomorrow, I'll be ready to burn my image. So for this, what you wanna do is get your bucket. Since you didn't use all of your emulsion, and you wanna just carefully dump this stuff back in there. Because you get to reuse it. All right, you don't have to go crazy getting every last drop because you're not going to get it all. But for me, that's good enough. I got most of it out. Now I'm going to close this up first. All right, so now that I have my emulsion put up, I'm going to put on a glove. I'm going to put on this other glove. And I'm going to use my pump sprayer to basically wet this. Use my hand with a glove and just work that emulsion. It comes right off. Work both sides pretty good. I'm just doing a cleanup. Spray it. Then I'm gonna do the same thing for this. Get it nice and wet. You don't wanna let this sit because that stuff dries up on your scoop coating. It's harder to clean out. But I'm wearing a glove because I can get my finger and just start working this. Makes the process go faster. Now, I'm pretty sure there's other ways to do this, but this is just the way I do it. All right, now that that's done, let this dry off while the screens dry off. And then once that's dry, come back and burn the uh, screen. All right, so now that I got my screens dried, the next step is to get my transparency set up on the exposure unit. And this is my exposure unit. This is all in one press. So I'm gonna get my film so I can line my artwork. Put that down, then I'm gonna get a, another piece of clear film so I can put my image on top of this. Turn my light on so I can see what I'm doing. And on the bottom film, I have little marks that I made. You can't see it, but it marks the center of my design. 
so that it burns center onto the screen. So this is going to be my top image. I put some very large uh, center marks on it that are pretty much oversized because I didn't need to make it, you know, uniformed. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ruler, just a regular yardstick, find those center lines that I put on the bottom of the film and I already know how far down I need to come on both of these designs. So I just pretty much want to get the design center. I'm just going to eyeball this part. That center. I'm still going to be moving it. But for this one, I know I want from the top of this platen, and this, this is the outline of my platens, I want to come down four and a half inches. So I'm going to take this, move it down four and a half inches, and that falls about about right there. And then this one on the bottom, I'm coming down ten and a half inches. It's moving a little bit on me. All right, it's four and a half. The next one's ten and a half. Slide this up. It's good enough. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and center it. And this is how I align my artwork. Once I got that pretty center, I get my tape. Then I come and look at it so I can Try to get it as straight as possible. Now that I got it straight, I'm going to go ahead and put this tape on it so it doesn't move. And that takes care of the top one. Now I can focus on the bottom print. Or the bottom transparency. Make sure my oversized hash marks are pretty centered. And I'm going to say that that's good. Again, I'm just eyeballing it, not spending too much time on it. Oh, I just lost my piece of tape. I'm gonna tape the second one down. All right, so now that I have it down, turn my light off for now. I'm gonna print this, or I'm gonna burn this into a 110 screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and lower this down. All right, and I'm gonna get a screen out of here. Now I have my garage door open, light is coming inside, but as long as you don't have your screen out for too long, I mean, you don't wanna expose to too much light because it is gonna start uh, hardening with natural light in here, but as long as you work fast, you should be good. So I'm gonna pull a 110 out of here. We'll just go with this 110 right here, the front one that's on top. All right, so I'm gonna put this, well, before I can put it down, remove this one on the bottom. I have to remove this because if I don't remove it, all that will burn into my screen. All right, so now that I got that removed, I'm gonna get my screen. Put it up here. I have this that goes over the design. I like to put a black 
bag over top of the whole area. This is just something that I do. Not necessary, but you do need some kind of weight to press down to make sure you have a nice flat area pressing down on your screen or down onto the glass. What I like to use is an old rotor from a car. So I got an old rotor inside the box. I got an old rotor on top. All right. Then I turn my machine on. The time that it takes to burn is 1 minute 25 seconds. I hit start. And then my UV light on my machine, they, uh, they switch over to the UV, UV LEDs or whatever. So I'll be burning this for a minute 25 seconds. All right, now that my screen is burned, what I like to do is get my pump sprayer and just miss the whole screen. And you'll start to see the image starting to burn a little bit. I spray both sides. The reason I like doing my, uh, my pump spray is because the water pressure is very light. I don't have to worry about blowing my image out. And it also allows the emulsion to weaken. So the area that the light did not pass through, when I come back with my hose, it easily washes out. So I just spray it for a little bit. I spray it until I start seeing the emulsion starting to break down and start to come down the screen. You don't necessarily have to, you can just let it sit for a little bit. That's actually long enough, that's all the time that I need. But the moment that you start seeing the emulsion break down, the emulsion will start to get lighter. As far as the image that's burning into the screen, it'll get lighter than the actual emulsion that you're using. The emulsion that I'm using is a Ulano Orange, and it's broken down enough. I can go ahead and get my hose. both sides. Once that's done, I like to take it, hold it up to the light. Make sure I have all the emotion out. There's no spot that's going to create pinholes and if there's anything I'm just going to hit it one more time just to be sure like I see a spot on the A all right well good another reason why I like to use my pump spray is because I don't have to come back and use as much pressure when I wash all that out. So if you can see this, everything is out. Now what I like to do is come back behind it with the shirt, take it upside down, and just dab the areas that I just washed out. The reason why I dab it is to it helps reduce any kind of water that gets trapped inside of the screen, making it water large. So that's just something that I do, something that I kind of just figured out along the way. Once that's done, put this back in your drying rack that you took it out from and let a fan move the air around to dry over time. And once that's done, you'll be ready to print. All right, so that's how you reclaim some screens, burn a new image to get it ready for the next print job. So if you found this information useful, please smash the like button. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. And as always, be yourself, be your best. I'm JBM. I'm out.